Hello everyone, welcome to today's YouTube tutorial. Today I'll be taking you through the process of making this Star Wars panel texture using Sargent's Designer. Uh, we won't need to use Photoshop for any of this, we're just making all the shapes just in Designer itself. Uh, it's good practice doing this and um, we definitely recommend it if you're new to Sargent's Designer. It also gives you quite a bit of control really uh, and you can make changes throughout the whole process opposed to Photoshop where you might be a um, bit limited because you have to keep going all the way back to another software and then back into this software and so forth which isn't so great. Uh, one thing you should note before we start is whenever you're making a panel texture it can make your graph quite large um, which can make some painter lag but uh, this graph isn't too bad it should be just fine so um, I wouldn't worry about it too much if you're not too worried about that sort of thing but if you are we can compress it down into three um, or each panel into three images here and then create another graph um, based off that one. But I'll do that at the end of the tutorial. So to begin with, we're going to start with the panel one over here and on layer one. Uh, we've got two shapes here. Um, they're both squares and this one is at a size of 0.99 on the X. That's just to give it a little gap in between. And then on the Y it's 0.3. Uh, and then the next shape we've got, uh, it's another square and it's on X is on 0 0.9 and then the Y is 0 0.73. Then we're blending uh, this panel with a mid-tone grey uh, and that's on a multiplier. And it's the same for this one as well. And then you move uh, both of these panels into their respective positions. So this one is sort of sitting at the top there and then this one sort of uh, comes down to the bottom bit. and doesn't really leave much of a gap. Uh, then next we uh, want to blend these two together so that we now essentially have our first panel done. Uh, so that's nice quick and easy and this is pretty much the process through the whole thing. So um, it'll be a, a lot of this. Uh, next we're pushing it through a non-uniform blur. Uh, that's just to give me a sort of bevel in between these two gaps. Uh, so you just set that at uh, intensity of three uh, zero, 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 and then samples of 16, blades of 9 sort of thing. Because yeah, we only want a very slight sort of blend in there. Just, just give you a nice softer look to it. Obviously it depends on what sort of panels you got. Some panels you want to have harder edges, some of them you want softer anyway. Then we're controlling that again with just a gradient map. That's just for control sakes later on. I did uh, adjust it a little bit. We've got uh, sort of two greys here and I've just clamped them to closer towards the black here. Then we want to plug that into a blend node and put it on a multiply and we're plugging that into the background of that. Then we're done with uh, layer 1 so we can move up to layer 0 which is where the vent is. Uh, now the vent's made up of two shapes, we've got a square shape and a disc shape. Uh, the disc shape is on a size of 0 0.01 in both X and Y and then the X for this one is on 0 0.88 and then 0 0.01 for the Y. Uh, then we just move into the position of the Transform 2D and then we're mirroring um, on the X for the disks so that they're on both sides of the square and then we blend those two together with either an Add Linear Dodge or a, uh, what was it, the Max Lighten. Either are fine, they'll both do the job. Um, then we use a non-uniform blur just to bevel the edges. You can use the same one as before. Um, this one's at a intensity of 0.42. And we're using a gradient map just to control it a little bit more because it's a slightly harder edge and we've pushed it more closer towards the white this time. Uh, then we're creating a uniform color, just a normal black color, and we're plugging it into the background on an FX map. And then we plug the gradient map into image input zero. Of the FX map. Now the FX map won't just work right away, it would probably just look like a singular thing for you. So we then have to go into the FX map and click edit. Uh, now when you first open up an FX map you'll probably just be greeted with just a singular quadrant node, you won't have this one up here. So what you want to do first is set the pattern to image input and then you want to push the spacebar and then type in iterate or it should just be here because it's like that and then you'll have an iterate node. Uh, right click the iterate node, um, set it to the root and then plug it into the quadrant node from the right input. So input 1 to input right there so you don't want to use input 0. 
Um, now it's worth noting that uh, we have two features here, we've got random seed and we've got iterations. So the one we're going to be using is the iterations one. So if we go into the um, quadrant node here and we'll click on a branch offset and we'll edit. Well, for you guys, you'll have to go um, empty function. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, then we'll open up uh, empty graph where you'll have to type things in. So I've got a variable here. Um, called number and that's basically just the iterations number that we saw before and that's multi again multiplied 0 0.02 times every time this number goes up and that's been plugged into the y-axis because uh, this is a vector 2 float and there's also an x-axis here and the x-axis will be set to 0 so if that was put to 0 0.01 or whatever if I moved it like that now it's you see it's moving over there so forth so uh, make sure you click on this one and you say set as output node um, and you should be a-okay. Now we just need to move it into position for transform 2D and then invert its grayscale so that the vents are um, now a sort of black color so that they go inwards. Um, now we just blend it in with our last layer so now we have this sort of result um, and now we can start moving on to layer 2. Uh, layer 2's just got two sort of panels to it, um, so let's have a look at this. So this one's like this sort of top little panel bit here. So this one's made up of a uniform colour and we've just set it to a slightly higher grey. I think it went like 0 0.75, so that's about like 3 quarters or something. And then I also have a shape node here, which is just a square. And put the scale at 1 and then the size at 0.82 on the X and 0.07 on the Y and then there's another shape here which is the lower sort of square one um, so it's slightly bigger than the other one so it's 0.82 and 0.12 on the Y uh, and then we're blending that with our gray so just a multiply for both uh, then we're moving those into position with the transform 2d again and we blend those two together just for add linear dodge or maximum lighten, whatever your choice may be. Now it's on to the middle part of layer two. It's made up of four shapes. Um, we've got the sort of this square here, which is like a smaller, um, smaller square and the slightly more rectangle one. And then we've got two like sort of cut off ones there. So this is the smaller one here. Uh, it's just a square and the size is at 0.25 on the X and Y and then a scale of 0.95 um, Then we've got an, the next square being 0.95 again and then a size of 0.25 on the X and 0.29 on the Y uh, And finally with these last two ones, they're just the 0.25 and 0.7 on the Y um, and then the scale is 0 0.8 and this one is exactly the same as this one because this one's going to be used for cutting out of this one so uh, let's start with the top of the top square ones so the easiest ones we're blending it with the um, three-quarter gray color up here so it's on the same height value as the other panels um, and it's just a blend multiply the same for this one and this one here um, and then we go to use a transform 2D and we're just adjusting its position a little bit and moving it up um, And then this one we're adjusting the position and moving it down uh, Then we blend it with the add linear dodge um, And we are all good and ready to go with that shape So if we move back down here, we'll see what we've done here is I've just used the transform 2D and rotated it a little bit and moved it uh, so the way I sort of worked this out was um, I grabbed a blend node um, you push this through into that you subtract it you put your 2d in between and then you just rotate it till you get about the shape that you're looking for and then that should be all good um, next after that you want to just sort of make it a little bit wider because it wasn't quite the right size so that's again just another, another adjustment I use this node quite a bit just for making minor tweaks to after I saw it being tiled and I'm like, no, it's not quite right. So I better change that. Um, so I mirror that so it's on both sides. 
um, on the X, so a mirror on the X right there. And then we blended it in with our two small squares here, and that's just an add linear dodge again. And that gives us our whole center shape here. So I then grab a transform 2D and sort of scale it down a little bit. Thought it was a little bit too intrusive a little bit. So um, I did that, and then we just make another blend node and put another add linear dodge here. And we're then blending this layer together finally. Then once that layer is all blended together, we can add it to the rest of the layers. So here's layer one here. We want to add layer two on top of this one, or on top of layer one. So we put it in the foreground, and that one's in the background. And this one's going to be a max light in this time. Now with that being blended, we're almost done with the third, first panel. Sorry, um, But we have one more layer to do, and that's layer three. Uh, this one's nice and quick to do. So we have a uniform color here. It's a much brighter uniform color at 0.94. And we have two shapes, just squares. We're just essentially making these details here. So the scale is 0 0.23, 0 0.05 on the Y, and this one's 0 0.16 on the X, and 0 0.22 on the Y. We're blending that in together, and then we're moving them into position. Um, once they're in position, we then create another one here, actually, which is slightly more to the right of this one. And then we blend those in together with a max lighten, and this one gets moved into position and we do a mirror grayscale two of them which this one's slightly further down and then we can blend that together again and then we move this one in its correct location and we blend those two together so now we finally have those details and we can push it into our final blend down here which just should technically go all the way down there like so so that's just a uh, max lighten again now that this panel's done i think i'll leave it there for now and we'll kick off again in part two